Hello YouTube, thought I'd do a quick video here. This video is gonna do be another self test. The first part of this video, you do not need a computer. Okay, the second part of this video, you'll need a computer. But the first part of this video, we're gonna, we don't need a computer. We don't need to do any other settings. We're gonna do a quick hook up their interface board to the repeater and let's do another quick test before we dive into the software part of it. There's no sense of doing the software if we have problems with the hardware. So we're going to, what you now just refresh your memory. This is the Redivis RT97S repeater. This should also work with the Midland MXR10 repeater. Uh, those two repeaters have a data port on the side. This interface board plugs into it uh, and lets you hook up a computer to the interface or hooks up. Uh, computer to your repeater so that you can run date and time uh, and Zello and, and weather announcements over the airways. So what we're going to do is have your repeater hooked up to either a dummy load or antenna. It does not matter. I'm using a dummy load because my antenna coax does not reach this workbench. Also, in this whole video, we're not going to worry about the audio cables. That is not needed. We're not going to worry about that. So this, you will not have any sound when you start doing this, when you start watching this video because we're not going to leave, we're going to leave the sound unhooked. Okay? Second thing, you're going to need a radio that is programmed to the repeater frequencies that the interface board is plugged into. So make sure you have it programmed correctly or this will not work. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to check the hardware again. We're going to plug in the power supply into an extension cable here. Power supply is plugged in. The power supply is for the interface board. Obviously the repeater is turned on and we got a handheld here. Now what you're going to see when I key up this handheld, you're going to see a red light on here. You're going to see a green light on the interface board and you're going to see the repeater key up because the bar graph will go up and the bar graph will go all the way up if you have the repeater on high power. So let's go ahead and key this up. I have a red light on here, green light on here, and the repeater's keyed up. We're on a good path. If you do not get the green light, you have a problem. There's no sense going any further. If you do not get a green light, watch my video, if you haven't done so, on the post power on self test. Very simple to do. That checks. 95% of the interface board that the components are working correctly. You don't even need a repeater to do that. Watch that video. If you have a problem then, obviously there's something wrong with the interface board. If, the, if, it, if it passes the power on self test and you come back to this part of the video and you plug it in and it's not keying up, a couple things you can quickly check. Again, Make sure you're on the right frequency on your radio. Double check that. Make sure the interface board is plugged in securely. The interface board's not crooked or kittywampus or anything like that. Make sure it's plugged in securely. Um, obviously, make sure the power, the interface board plugged into power. And if you key up and you see the bar graph on here, that would tell you that most likely the repeater's keying up. But if you don't get a green light, then you either have something wrong with the repeater data port, something's wrong there, or there's a 5% chance or less there's something wrong with the interface board. Usually, if it passes the power on self test, the only things that could really be bad on the interface board would be either there is a pin that's bent in the connector or maybe a trace is broken or something kind of weird like that. That's why I say that test is 95% of the board when you do the power on self test. I'll post that link in the description below. So once you do that, the green light turns on, we are off to a good start. Now I want to tell you about another feature that's kind of neat here that I, um, have and I've been telling you throughout the videos that you should have remote access to your repeater either to turn off the repeater 
or remote access and or, well, I shouldn't say or, and you should have remote access to your, your laptop so you can restart software. Now, let's say for an example, the power supply for the repeater goes bad and the repeater loses power. Now, obviously, if the repeater loses power, then their two-way radios ain't going to work. But if you're using Zello, it will tell you on Zello. And what I mean by that is, if I disconnect the power to show that the repeater lost power, do you see what happened? That green light turned on. That's going to dead key Zello. It's going to key up Zello. It's going to stay keyed up. Obviously, the repeater is not keyed up because there's no power. So people on the radio will know right away the repeater ain't working. People on Zello will know they can't talk because the repeater's dead keying. So you're thinking, okay, great. So how do I make it not dead key Zello until I get to the repeater site? Easy fix. You can do it right from your smartphone or tablet. If you are a admin or a moderate of your repeater Zello channel, you tap on the name, the username of your repeater. Tap on that, scroll down, there is a function called bounce. Bounce means kick the repeater off the channel. That will free up the channel so you can tell people on Zello, hey, the repeater malfunctioned, uh, the repeater is not working right now, the only thing that's working is Zello. And um, th then you can go ahead and get to the repeater site to, to see what's going on. Now, obviously, with repeater no power, people on the radio are not going to be able to talk on the Zello, obviously. Now, this could apply. Remember how I said you should have, you should be able to turn off your repeater remotely to shut it down if there's a malfunction, if the repeater all of a sudden keys up all by itself and you want a way to shut it down, you should use a smart outlet. So you'd plug the power cord into a smart outlet and that lets you shut off the, re the repeater remotely. There's an app you can download onto your phone or tablet. But if this malfunctions and it turns off the repeater, it will tell you on Zello. Again, so that's kind of a neat little feature. So when the power comes back on, it's automatically going to unkey and the light will go off. So that's neat little feature there. So that's how you do a quick hardware test before we dive into the software. Now we're gonna go in the software part of the video. So right now, if you need to pause this video, go set up your COM port sharing software, go set up your date and time, your COM ports, your DB9 adapter, go do all that, come back to this video. Once you're done with that, we're going to go on to the next part. And that is, we're gonna plug in the DB9 adapter now. Again, we're not going to worry about the sound card. We're not going to worry about that. Now, there's kind of another self-test um, that I'm going to show you. Now, obviously, I cannot test this with every computer, with every DB9 adapter out there. So I'm going to assume it's going to act this way with every setup out there. Okay? But I cannot guarantee it. But that doesn't matter because when, he, when I show you what it should do in the end, that's what matters the most. But let me go ahead. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to start Zello. Now, when I start Zello, again, I cannot guarantee that, you know, every computer is going to act this way, but it should. When I start Zello, you're going to hear a click on the interface board. The green light is going to come on. The repeater is not keyed up. Zello is not keyed up. You can't see that. Even though it says it is here, but it's not keyed up. Also, I'm going to get my fancy pen. Also, what I mean is, when you look right here, and it says active. Okay, so Zello is partially keyed up, but it's not fully keyed up because anyone in the Zello channel will see that it's not keyed up. What this is telling you, when it does this, again, it should do this with every computer, but I, I'm not for sure. But that doesn't matter. You'll see why, because in, in the end, we want the end result what's important. But if it does this, the green light is on. 
it's telling you it's ready for the next step. And the next step is to start the date and time software. So we're going to go ahead and start that. You'll hear the relay on click. You will see the green light goes off. And in the Zello, where I underline it says waiting. That is what we want. So whether or not your setup turns on that green light, it may or may not. Again, it should, but I can't test every computer, every DB9 adapter out there. But if, but the end result, you should have, it should, it should say waiting, um, and there should be no lights on the interface board. Now, we're going to take the handheld. Now remember, we just tested the hardware, so we know the hardware is working. We're going to make sure the software is going to work now. We're going to take the handheld. When I key up this handheld, you're going to see the green light come on. You're going to see Zello, where it says waiting, will go to active. And you're also going to see, let me get my fancy pen. You're also going to see the cuckoo bird go behind a shutter. And you're going to see a bubble pop up here of Zello that the repeater is transmitting on Zello. Okay? So hopefully you got all that. Red light on here. You can't see the repeater, obviously, because I got the window covering it. But the red light on here, green light on here, cuckoo bird go behind the shutter. Let me get my thing here. This will go behind the shutter. This will go to active, and you'll see a bubble come up here. Again, no sound. We don't have the sound hooked up. Don't worry about sound. Looks like everything is working properly. That shutter, if you just refresh your memory, is turning off the date and time when a handheld is keyed up. We don't want the date and time announcements to try to key up over a handheld when someone's talking. That disables that until the till there's no, it will postpone it until there's, the channel's free. That's what the shutter means. See all that? Green light. Shutter, active, bubble. The bubble in the right-hand corner. If you do not get that, you have a software problem. You have a setting wrong. Remember, we checked the hardware with the, with the DB9 unhooked, and that green light came on, right? the first part of this video. So hardware seems to be working fine. You have a software problem. Either you have a COM port setting wrong, either your DB9 adapter is not working properly, Maybe the driver or something needs to be updated. But you have something wrong with the software. Okay? So, you have to do some investigating to see what's going on. Now, this now we're going to do it the other way. What I mean by the other way is we're going to key up on a smartphone or a tablet. Okay? I have a tablet here. So, when I key up, the, the, the tablet is signed into the, Zello, the repeater Zello channel. When I key that up, there's certain things we should see. Okay, so let's go ahead, clear the screen. What we're going to see, a couple things. We're going to see the transmit mode right here. It's going to go from waiting to active, and then you're going to see a bubble pop up of the person, whoever's keying up in the channel, and you're going to see a green light on the radio. It's receiving from the repeater. And you're going to see a red LED turn on. It's okay. So when I key up a smartphone or a tablet that's running Zello, let's see. I'm going to push the, you can't see me do this, but I am doing it. See how it does that? Red light, active, and the bubble. That's, again, no sound because we don't have sound hooked up. We're not worried about it. Again, if you do not get that, you have a setting wrong. This red light will only turn on when you have the settings more or less set correctly. 
the signal comes from the DB9 that turns that red light on. That's the only way that red light's going to turn on. It needs the signal from the DB9, so you got to have everything set up correctly when it comes to the iPad or smartphone going over the two-way radio. Let me do it again. I'm going to push the I'm going to push the, the talk button on my app here on my tablet. It's receiving from the repeater, green light, red light. It says active in the on there. And the, the user's name who's keying up is in the bubble down below. We're good. Everything is working good. Now we can go ahead and hook up the sound cables to the USB sound card and do my sound adjustments. I'm not going to go into that with this video because... I have other videos that do that. Again, that will be in the in the playlist I post in the link down below. So that's how you do a quick way of making sure the COM ports are working, um, some of the hardware is working. Uh, if you do those steps, you'll save a lot of time. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please post them down below. Please subscribe. Thank you, and have a good day.